Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Good morning, Duluth. Good morning, Rochester. Good morning, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and all of our stations. Good morning. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister and Hardy's employee of the month, Kendall Mark. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Much better than yesterday. Yes. You, um, now you were back from vacation. What day is it? Tuesday? Yep. You are back from vacation uh, yeah, uh, Monday. Yep. You seem way more alert I am. Uh, than you were yesterday. Yes. I think I had like a sinus infection or a cold. Or what was that reaction? Oh, no. I, no was it's not, it what wasn't for you. you. It wasn't doing? for you. It was a signal to executive producer Jeff. Sure. He went like this. <laughs> yeah. No. Do you want me to really tell you the truth? Do you want me to pull back the curtain? Yes, please. My backlight looks like Jesus himself is shining on me. <laughs> I mean, that's what it looks like I have. Um, uh, a police uh, uh, light shining in the back of me. Anyway, um, no, you seem, you you know, the, Monday, this, I, no offense, but this yeah. was you. Hi. Yeah, I wasn't feeling great. I'm like, who comes back from vacation and is like, oh, a zombie, me. Yeah. But I slept basically all day yesterday and I feel great. Well, happy, uh, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. I'm not going to sing the rest of it because I actually want you to watch the show. Today, we realized, we always realize this a little late, mm -hmm. but executive producer Jeff realized that today is the sixth anniversary of our show. That's right. Six years ago today, Yay! the Jason Show debuted right here on Fox 9. A couple years later, uh, uh, we did a national run. We added some, what? Months later, we did a, na oh, it really was. We did a national run months later. Fox, uh, you know, we were the little show that could. You know, the company is like, what is this? Like, what are you doing in Minneapolis? What is this? Is it a cartoon show? Mm -hmm. uh, who is that? You're going to let him host? And then uh, they were surprised within a couple months. We beat The View right away and, and the 18th hour of the Today Show. And then we did a national run. We added stations and choo-choo. Uh, we're just a little show that could. So, yeah, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you and to Jeff and, to, well, everybody. I mean, I was, I'm the newest one. So. You are. You're the newest one. Yes. Uh, we've had, you know, a couple, you know, like Roseanne changed Becky's. <laughs> uh, Bewitch changed Darren's. There's always a new Lassie. We've changed Did producers. You still me to Lassie? No, no, I, not you. But you know, we've had a couple different producers. Shane Wells was the first producer. Yep. And then she went on to do on-air stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, Young Carl. Yep. And then he went. Now he's in New York. He's fancy. He's working for Lawrence O'Donnell. And now, Ted. Producer Ted. Ted. The, the, the Ted. The creme de la Ted. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so the only OGs are really, well, me, and then executive producer Jeff, mm -hmm. and then photographer Eric was our first hire. And uh, You were the first hire? Oh, and Leo, well, Leo worked here, but yeah, Leo's, yeah. A, yeah, Leo's directed the majority of the Jason shows. Yep. So, yeah, those, those are the OGs. <laughs> and that's the whole staff. And literally, <laughs> and that's the staff. <laughs> That's literally, so when you, when people email and they're like, you sure didn't get back to me in time, that's why. You're, yeah. you're looking at 75% of the staff. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's basically it. But no, Eric was our first hire and uh, all week long, I'll give little thanks, but I'll make this real quick. I said it to him privately and, I, and I'll say it publicly, I would not do this show without Eric. Uh, I really wouldn't. And I, he's, he's the best. Uh, the bosses have no idea. No one has no, uh, any idea how creative this guy is. Uh, he works from no script. You know, we don't do all of this. You know, we do a lot of ad lived here. And the same thing with the pieces. You know this. Yeah. We go out and we let the pieces uh, take on a life of their own. And then Eric gets in the edit suite and molds them together. Not every editor can do that. I mean, not every photographer can craft a narrative and a story and make it funny. He can do all those things, mm -hmm. and uh, he's the best. And I, I, I wouldn't do the show without him, which I should say one more time, because today, ironically, is the day I have contract talks with Marion Mim Davey. That's right. You're going to go see the Jedi Master? I'm going up to the Belfry. 
today. What's what's the who planned that on the day of the anniversary? I'm going up because I have no contract right now. I could walk right now out right now and work at Arby's, but uh, I'm going up to negotiate. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what I've decided to do is I'm going to live stream the talks. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Wouldn't right. that be great, though? That would be. I'll just stand outside the door, and if anything goes down, just whistle, and I'll just bolt in. Perfect. And, okay. and rescue me? Yep. Yeah. Anyway, thanks to all of you. we got to get going, but uh, start the hot dish. Thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, I'll give you thanks all week long, but my goodness, you've kept us on the air, and I greatly appreciate it. Leo, roll the hot dish. Our anniversary <laughs> hot dish, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Should have been a cake. Should have been a cake. Oh well. Season season eight will do that. It's time for the hot dish. Filming for the next season of The Bachelorette is underway. And according to Bachelor Insiders, this is why we're doing this right now. It's happening in our own backyard. <gasps> Michelle was spotted at the Twins game this weekend. And when I say spotted, I mean she was on the Jumbotron. Uh, <laughs> going on a one-on-one -on -one date. They sure tried to keep this a secret, didn't they? This photo comes to us. Thanks, Brian McClung. We appreciate it, buddy. Who claims he's never seen The Bachelor before. <laughs> reality, said, uh, reality Steve says they booked the Marquette uh, Hotel for the month of August in downtown Minneapolis. Unclear if the whole season is going to be shot here. I received, I received on my Facebook instant messenger uh, a tip, an anonymous tip uh -huh. that let me know that they were shooting at the big stadium yesterday and today. Oh. So there's tips flying everywhere. Everywhere. I feel like uh, Trish Van Pilsen or Tom Lydon from our investigative unit. <laughs> Just, but yeah, they're everywhere. So if you're walking around the Twin Cities and you see a camera crew, it's probably ABC. It's odd that they booked it for the full month. We can't figure that out. Yeah. And again, alleged, alleged, yes, alleged. we don't know. Yes. yes. Allegedly. But because normally it takes, I think, six to eight weeks, which is still very fast to yeah. fall in love. But so just the one month. I don't know. Hmm. hmm. Speaking of Bachelor Nation, the new season of Bachelor in Paradise debuted last night. David Spade served, I love this, as guest host. He's, if you guys don't know, is a Bachelor super fan. So he was in his element. Look at this. Guys, thanks for coming to Paradise. Hope you're having fun so far. I won't be taking my shirt off. That was your next question. <laughs> <laughs> because I have no detectable muscles. I do have legs like Carrie Underwood, though. Check it out. Yeah. But I'm going to bring out your boy Will. Okay, now ABC, just give him the gig. I might actually watch that circus. Uh, as for the show, everyone made out, uh, and they will be yelling at each other by the end of their season, and there will be a lot of STDs uh, spread around. Oh, yes. stop. It, oh, come on. It's Herpy Valley over there. Okay, well, I, they don't make out... Okay, Kendall, that's all the show is. Do a lot. Actually. It's all, it's just pretty people with zero body fat <gasps> making out with each other and drinking margaritas. Oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you. Did you hear that supposedly, allegedly, Becca is coming back for this season? M Minnesota Becca? Yeah, she'd be the only former Bachelor Bachelorette. Wait, didn't Colton come back? Either way, she'd be the only former Bachelorette to come and do then Bachelor in Paradise. Mm. I don't know. I like Becca's mom. But Becca kind of, um, just being real, keeping it real in our sixth season, at the end of our sixth season, yeah. Becca kept turning us down for an appearance. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't she like us? Becca's, I don't know, Becca's mom I love. But yeah, yeah. Becca was like, no, sorry, we're going to do Twin Cities Live. Mm -hmm. So it was a big Twin Cities no for us. Yeah. I'm really sad. Bitter, party of one, your table's ready. <laughs> Bitter, party of one. Don't let the door hit you on your way in. I wish her nothing but the best. That's so passive aggressive. <laughs> Next in the dish, interest in the field of dreams is at an all time high. You know, thanks to the to Major League Baseball's special game last week that really was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And now the streaming service Peacock yeah. has given the green light on a new series based on the field of dreams. The writer of the good place will take the reins. The series will reimagine the mixture of family, baseball, Magic and Iowa. This is <laughs> Jason. <laughs> this is the second Peacock series adapted from Universal's vast movie library. The first being Seth MacFarlane's Ted.
Here's the problem I have with this. Iowa, what is that a problem? No, I love Iowa. Okay. My aunt lived in Sioux City, Iowa for many, many years, ran a thrift store. Okay. My late Aunt Evie, I love you, I miss you. Okay. Uh, I love Iowa. Okay. This is my problem. What do I say when networks run things into the ground? Keep it special. <laughs> Hashtag layer your nachos and keep it special. Who wants to be a millionaire is the ultimate example. ABC had a golden goose with the with the who wants to be a millionaire and then they take they took the goose in the back and they shot it because they ran it every day of the week. They ran it right into the ground and we as viewers we got sick of it. They took away what makes it special. Keep field of dreams special. Major League Baseball should do a field of dreams uh, game every year. That's special, but don't make a show out of it. I mean, I kind of like it. I do. I, okay. think, I, mean, I thought maybe you would like it even because of the good fight part of it. How it's the people behind them. Good place. Go, good place. Oh, maybe you Close. won't like it. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe you won't like it at all, actually. We'll try to get it right by our eighth anniversary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're back. We're back. <laughs> We're going to take a break and we'll be back right <laughs> after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> The hot dish isn't over yet. Coming up next, the mirror really does have two faces. Find out why Barbara Streisand is bashing Bradley Cooper's remake of A Star is Born, even though she was in a remake herself. Anyway, that is coming up. Then, it's the hot and hip new workout place, Berries. But is it really as tough as folks say? Producer Ted is finding out the hard way. And it is hard to believe, but today is the sixth anniversary of our show. So we're looking back at some of our favorite moments. That and more, still ahead. Was posted, Mershka Hargate is a friend of yours and she broke her ankle. Uh, and you could have, you texted, you probably did. You send her flowers, whatever a friend would do and say, hey, get well. Instead, you took it to another level. Can you tell our audience what you, what you did? Well, she yeah, she like rolled her ankle, and it was like a really a really severe break. And she's a really good texter, and I'm terrible. Sometimes, like I don't like I put my phone in my purse for three days, and then people are like, "Where are you?" And she sent me a really funny text of like, "Oh, don't worry, I'm just here in a lot of pain recovering." I guess you're too busy to respond to my to my text. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, game on. So now I have to make it seem like this is why I didn't get back to you because I was petitioning for prayers. And so we literally jumped in the car and ran over, uh, as you do in Burbank, to Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah. And uh, I just jumped up and down and cars honked. And I think they were like, what? <laughs> I wanted to show the, the video, a little video. Here's Melissa McCarthy out there supporting her friend, Mershka Hargit. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. There, you got a honk. That's what I'm talking about. You got a couple, you got a honk. Melissa McCarthy from Fallon last night. I like Melissa McCarthy. I do too. I enjoy her. Mm -hmm. Bridesmaid, Bridesmaid still, one of the few movies ever where I laughed so hard in the theater, like out loud. You know, sometimes yeah. you do the polite laugh at a movie. Yeah. <laughs> That one, uh -huh. <laughs> that was a creepy laugh. That's like a serial killer laugh. Anyway, um, that movie, On the Floor. On the Floor laughing at that movie. The Over, dresses when they're trying to The dress the scene, yeah. the speeches at the, uh, at the, a gay, at the, the, the party, the bachelorette, or the, ba yeah, uh. so good. More late night, Megan uh, Stalter was on with Kimmel last night with guest host Merrin Morris. Megan is on the Emmy-nominated show Hacks and is known for her, her hilarious posts on social media. And she made quite the entrance. Look at this. I, I didn't realize I was winning backstage. I just won Prettiest Girl in the World. <laughs> <laughs> she is so good on Hack. She plays the assistant to 
uh, the agent of Gene Smart. Um, if you don't know, Hacks is about an aging comedian like a Joan Rivers type played by Gene Smart, who is assigned to have to work with a millennial writer to try to basically um, young upper act. And it just, there's intergenerational conflict and it's fantastic. If Gene Smart doesn't win an Emmy for that, and Kate Winslet doesn't win an Emmy for Mayor of Easttown, I, there's always two of these every year that I say, the Emmy should be shut down and turned into a Kmart because <laughs> it's a travesty. Jean is so good in that. And I love to see that she's kind of having like a third act. Jean Smart's having basically a third act. I love that. Next in the dish, the cast for the second season, even though the first isn't out yet, of the Real Housewives mashup is slowly leaking out and we're actually really excited. This season, season two, is going to feature all former housewives. Two of the OGs will star in the all-star show. Dorenda Clip from New York. Oh, oh, there's Vicky. Okay, Vicky from Orange County, who you see screaming here. Girl, that's me and Kendall after a, a post-show meeting right here. Mm -hmm. Other stars, Jill Zarin from New York, uh, Eva from Atlanta, and the always interesting Brandy. Glanville from Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, this what I just announced is the second season. The first season is actually going to premiere later this year, featuring current housewives like Kyle, Ramona, Teresa, and Cynthia, and that's going to air on uh, Peacock. Yeah. So, I love this. <laughs> I've been wanting them to do an all-star season for years, and getting former ones, brilliant. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. It's a good way to bring them back to be like, you don't have to be a housewife forever. We just want you for this one little thing. Yeah. They could yeah. put these wives in Invergrove Heights, and it would be 18 times better than the current season of New York, which again is a dumpster fire of, of, of mediocre television. I think you're on to something. Why don't we put all those housewives at like a fishing cabin in Leech Lake? Hey, I've always said that a, uh, that a real housewife set in, in like Lake Minnetonka would be hysterical. So great. Are you kidding me? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next in the dish, comedian Larry David was among the celebrities uninvited from former President Obama's birthday party. And unlike other celebs who didn't make the cut, Larry actually celebrated when he got the call. Larry told the New York Times over the weekend that he was assuming he'd have to perform at the party and was dreading it because that meant he'd need to come up with a routine. But when he got the call from the former president's assistant that he got cut, he says he screamed, thank you, thank you, and then hung up poured himself a drink, and finished his crossword. <laughs> and this brings, us, this brings us to one of life's un, untalked, not talked about, mm -hmm. underappreciated moments. Yes. And that is when you make plans, yes. and then those plans cancel, yes. and then you get to stay home. Yes. There's nothing better than that moment of your friend calling going, can I take a rain check? And you're like, sure. And then you have the whole night to yourself. That unspoken mutual appreciation. And you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And you both hang up and you both go, oh, thank God. Yeah. Thank God I don't have to hang out with you. Oh, yeah. I was dreading that. Yeah. I just, sometimes you just, you just want to be on your couch. All you know, the time. you just want it. What? All the time. Sometimes, all the Literally. time. Yeah. You just, mm -hmm. you just want to be alone. It's especially those like, work events for your spouse or like where you're going to be the one that doesn't know anybody and you're going to have to make forced conversation for four hours. Yeah. And you know me, I'm not great at small talk. Jason I, loves small talk. Next time you see him, just Kendall, be like, here we go. Let's Kendall, chat about the weather. Kendall. What was your fourth grade teacher? How do you feel about the Middle East? Sharks. Just continue on. Sharks, heights, and cocktail talk. All fears of mine. We should do a fish out of water about smoke. where I have to just do plunk, him plunk in me and, and plunk me inside a party <laughs> and just make me talk to people cold. Yeah. Oof, no. Go in cold. No oh day. no no no! I'm literally getting heart palpitations thinking about it. And heart because truly in life, and I mean this, what do you do after the hi? How are you? Uh huh. I don't know what to do after that. I can host this show with my eyes closed. Mm -hmm. With I, I can do it in my sleep. Yeah. This doesn't scare me. A cocktail party when four people come up to me, whoo, I look like a deer. 
Do you have that person that you're like, please come with me because they're really good at um, Well, them. I have code words with my friends. Yes. And Colin, mm -hmm. that if I need to be pulled, like, uh, so I'm not going to, I'll give you an old cold, code, code yeah, word. Yeah, give us the old one. Pineapple. Oh, I loved that one. Pineapple was an yeah, old one, yeah. One. That if my friend Jen or Lisa LaCourcier or Colin heard, it meant mm -hmm. rescue me. Yeah. I need rescuing. Now I have one that's more subtle that you can work into conversations. Oh. It's an animal. Dog. Mm -hmm. Nope, but it's an animal. So if they hear me say it, it's get him out of the situation. Alligator. Very close. <laughs> Next in the dish, Barbara Streisand has a few thoughts on the remake of A Star is Born. She starred in the, oh, I don't know, remake uh, in 1976 and was surprised at how similar the remake was to hers. Here's a clip from her interview with an Australian talk show. At first, when I heard it was going to be done again, it was supposed to be um, Will Smith and Beyonce. And I thought, that's interesting. You know, really make it different again. Different kind of music, you know, integrated actors. Uh, I thought that was a great idea. So I was surprised when I saw how alike it was to the version that I did in 1976. Well, that's probably a compliment to you. I don't know, but I, th I thought it was the wrong idea. And look, it was a big success, so who, I, I can't argue with success, but I don't care about, I don't care so much about success as I do originality. Obviously, I saw the mirror has two faces. Anyway, um... <laughs> Yeah, I'm pulled out of night. That was a that was a deep '90s reference there, Jason. Mm -hmm. It's on Netflix now. Anyway, look, I love look, Babs. I, I go queue up yesterday's show with my feelings on Deborah Winger, and that's kind of how I feel about this. Yeah. Just don't say anything, or you know what? And again, if you're in a remake of a remake, of if a you're remake. in a remake, you really can't bust on a remake right. of the remake. Right. That's just me. Okay, so I was looking into I did the Jason Show research team looked into this, and apparently even back in 2018 she kind of said the same thing. She had said, "Oh, interesting that they're not going to completely respin this off, but I really liked it. I really enjoyed it." Yeah, why can't you? It's a compliment to her. It is. If she they're redoing so. the Barbara and Chris, 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 Chris Offerson, uh, that's all of his names. Okay. Just cool. say, you know, hey, that's a, it's a, that's a compliment. Also, when super successful, very wealthy people are like, I don't really care about success. I'm like, oh, really? You don't? Oh, she cares about box office. You Come on. Come when on. she directed Bridges of Mattis, or I think, no, Clint Eastwood did that one. But when she's in a movie, she looks at the box office on Saturday morning. Who don't tell it? me you don't. Right? Yeah. How about you not rain on somebody's parade? That's a 60s Rain. reference, too. I'm uh, pulling out all the decades yeah. here. Next in the dish, Britney Spears has gotten a little more uh, revealing in her Instagram posts recently. And yesterday, she explained why. She posted this topless photo yesterday. She says, <laughs> Without what did the we car. do? Okay, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. We, we, had, we, uh, we added the Pinto, the Ford Pinto. Um, she says she feels like the weight of the world has been on her shoulders, and she wanted to see herself in a lighter way. She says, I'm a woman, a beautiful, sensitive woman who needs to look at myself in my purest form. I've said this with every Britney Spears story. I tread lightly because you don't want to kick someone when they're down. I try not to do that as much as I would love to make a snarky comment. I will say, however, when she posts stuff like this, it really does, it worries me. Because if you read her entire post, which I did, mm -hmm. it doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. It kind of jumps all over the place. And then at like the very end, what was her last line in yeah, it? Yeah, the very last line is like, by the way, these were taken on um, Holy Sunday or something like that. It was, what? Yeah. I, I don't know. It just, I worry about her sometimes. I know. And I just, I mean, and she does a lot of them. I mean, I, I'm doing, I was doing my Britney like imitation. Bubbies? Yeah. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I know. No, I see I what just, you're saying. I want her to be well. That's mm -hmm. all I want. Yeah. I want That's her to like want. move to Idaho and just like go on a ranch or Maybe. something. Maybe. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. <laughs> Welcome back, my friends. Hope you're having a good morning. 
Well, there is a new workout uh, place in the Twin Cities and has a reputation for making newbies uh, quite sore. So we wanted to see if it lived up to the expectations. Unfortunately, very sad. Kendall and I were both very, very busy, right? Kendall, very out of town. I was sleeping. So we sent producer Ted into the red room at Barry's in the North Loop. But did he make it out alive? We're going to find out because it's time for 43% of America love. Six is intermediate, seven is advanced. It's your workout, Ted. You do you, you have fun with it, okay? We'll do the beginner. Maybe the intermediate. Maybe, we'll figure it out. Let's start out of zero with that incline on the left. On the right oh. side. Oh. Keep the same. Ooh. Oh. Come on, Ted. Use your arm. I'm the one who thought this was a good idea. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Ow. In 15 seconds, you're gonna Ow. Oh. Ow. Whoa. There's no end in sight. It burns. I am horrified. Producer Ted Johnson joins us completely not sweaty from our control room. Good morning, Ted. I've never sweated so fast in my life. Okay, now we should, you know, we like to pull back the curtain. Um, we should explain, Ted, why uh, we're doing this a little different today. Usually there would be a beautifully edited, I, that's why I complimented Eric, a beautifully edited three minute opus. Hey, Ted, why are we only running one little sound bite at a time? <laughs> because apparently my sweat obstructed the mic and created a lot of popping sounds. And I'm, we're not joking, TV friends. Ted, right? This is not a joke. It messed with photographer Eric's microphone. Yes, we apparently don't sweat enough on our, pack, on our shoots yeah. uh, until now, until now. How do you feel? Now I feel great. This was like two weeks ago. Yeah, but uh, for that week after I was the sorest I've ever been. Well, tell me about tell us about the workout. What uh, it looks like there's a lot of interval like treadmill and then you jump off and you do strength training yep. and then you jump back on. What is it like? So we we got in and it was treadmill first, which is fine. I'm good. I'm good with the treadmill. I you know, you're I'm, a runner. I'm a runner. The lower lower half of the body. I'm all in, you know, so we're, we're, we're doing some jogs. She makes me increase the incline on the treadmill, which I've never done before. I've, I have sort of, I got a phobia of increasing the incline on the treadmill. So I do that, eh, it makes me a little, a little, you know, Winded. sweaty. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, this was, this was, I would say manageable. Okay. Manageable, but yeah, it was an interval. So you had to go fast right away. Okay, and then you jump off it and then you do some lifting, right? I mean, is it a mix? So yes, and so she said, you can do anything between, you have to go pick up some weights. So do anything between eight and 16 pounds. You could probably do 12 pounds. And I chose the eight pounds because I know thyself. And let's just say I don't lift a lot of weights. <laughs> so I was in pain. And it's just like, ah, uh, oh, yeah. there, there's a great angle. <laughs> and I, and you have to like, oh, no, those are horrible. Geez. Those are horrible. Oh, Ted, I feel really bad for you. Look at that. Okay, what, what's going through your mind right there, right now? What's going through your mind, Ted? Like, oh, I'm hoping that Eric pressed the record button. <laughs> Because I'm not going back to do this again. <laughs> wouldn't you, oh, Ted, wouldn't you have died if at the end of the shoot, photographer Eric said, oh, by the way, I forgot to press record. That would have been a nightmare. He came in yesterday. He's like, the audio is bad. I'm like, but the video is still good. Yeah. Good. Pl okay. Yeah. Tell me about your teacher. We saw her there. So Sophie, you know, kind of a, a very classic instructor, a lot of energy. And, you know, so before the, before, before the, before the class, 
Eric and I are just, you know, sitting out in the lobby doing, you know, whatever, whatever. Like, how, you know, how bad could this be? Uh, and then she greeted us. Take a look. All right, Ted, bring it in. Hello, welcome to Barry's Minneapolis. Come on in. Bring it in, bring it in. You can get walking or jogging. The on button is right underneath the R on the treadmill. T14. Draw, jog in? You can walk first. Okay. Yeah, jog it in. Jog it in. We have two three minute efforts on the treadmill, all with increasing inclines. Ooh. The right. Oh, I'm You're feeling that. It. First minute Ooh. of your. I think your shirt's on inside out as well. It is. Okay. Um, no. How about no <laughs> on that one? And how long did it take? Okay, so how long did it take to recover? Do you want like minutes or like days? I want days. Uh, I was feeling good by Sunday. And you shot this <laughs> win? <on> Monday. <laughs> it took you a full week? Yes. Wow. Uh, I believe we have more video of me doing the yoga is this the cool portion, down? The cool down portion. She's like, breathe through your nose. <laughs> Ted, oh God, Ted. And Ted. I'm like, I can't even lift my arms at this point. Ted, I gotta tell you, there you are real sweaty, my friend. That is, uh, that's. I, I don't think I've ever sweat that much in my life. Yeah, and again, you're athletic. You're a runner. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Wow, you did. You done did good, Ted. <laughs> you done did good. Thank you. Uh, Barry's is now open in the North Loop. For details, go to Barry's.com and ask for the Red Room. And <laughs> that sounded weird. Uh, <laughs> tell them you heard about it from uh, the Jason Show. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Uh, no. Well, now we have to send Ted with hashtag Hot Trainer. <laughs> Welcome back. It is time to see what you have to say about the show. Let us open up the Jason Show mailbag. You've got mail. First up is Kathy. She had something to say about my beef with Kendall after Kendall booked me to go on a zipline tour despite my crippling fear of heights. Kathy says, I've been to a zipline in Brainerd and did seven ziplines and stepped off a 50-foot tower, and I am a great-grandmother. Okay. Good for you. Next up. <laughs> Next up is Jody. She's uh, the woman who sent us the picture of the grasshopper, which looks like our old logo. Jody says, my son left for college and I decided to go buy a fish. So I have something new to care for. I named him Matheson. Here's the fish. <laughs> Look, oh, look man. at little Jason Matheson. Jody goes on to say, I wanted to get a second fish and name it Kendall, but they told me two betas can't be in the same tank because they're going to try to kill each other. <laughs> well, it's fish imitating real life. So sorry, Kendall. I love you both, but I need to get a second tank before I can bring a Kendall home. It's okay. I mean, again, mm -hmm. aquarium imitating real life. Beta, beta. That's right. Next, a message from Michelle. Hi, Michelle. We showed her uh, her picture on the show yesterday. Check out all the floaties in the lake. Remember this one? I love it. She has a pizza, pretzel, flamingo, poo, emoji, and more. Well, Michelle writes, we used to have a turtle too, but he had a bad flipper. <laughs> I hate when that happens. We'd love to have you come join us on the flotilla. You know me. I like a good cabin. I mm -hmm. like floating around. Yeah. I hope you have a good little bar set up, then I'll be there. And no small talk. No small talk, yeah. Please. Next up is Jennifer. She has a comment on my go to jukebox song, Queen of Hearts by Juice Newton. She goes, OMG, Jason, you're my best friend in my head. Every day you say something that I can relate to. Today it was Juice Newton. That was the first 45 I bought with my own money. 45, do you know what a 45 is? I'm not trying to be insulting. It's the smaller. Disc, You're not right? insulting at all. No, right? I mean, I barely, yeah, 45 is a smaller record. Okay. They used to it. sell singles on a 45. So it was just a single then? Usually with a B side. Yeah, there'd be a different oh. song on the other side. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, they're cute. Finally, a comment from Kim about the candle I got that smells like. 
the Polynesian Hotel Lobby at Walt Disney World. Kim says, just purchase the Poly Lobby candle for my bestie who is a Disney World freak like you, Jason. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, seriously, that is one of the best birthday presents I've ever received is that candle because I don't know how they do it. Again, parksense.com or parksense. It smells just like the lobby of the Polynesian Resort at Walt Disney World. Well, and I think whenever somebody puts in, in this case, executive producer Jeff, like puts that kind of thought into thought something. Thought into something, yeah. You're like, wow, you didn't just go give me anything. You thought about it. Weston hotels also have a very distinct smell. I wish that I could get that in a candle too. So does the MGM. Yeah, MGM in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it smells like regret and poorness. Yes, because you've lost all of your money. I was going to go with, you know, like jasmine and cigarettes, but that's okay. Same thing, yeah. Okay. Jasmine, cigarettes, empty wallet. You can stay connected with our show on social media. Check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search for Jason Show TV. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> regret. <laughs> Empty ATM card, cigarette. Welcome back. It is hard to believe, and we can't believe that we actually remember this year, but today is the sixth anniversary of our show. On this day in 2015, we launched the show after a summer of planning meetings, and we thought it'd be fun to look back at some of our favorite moments from the past six years, starting with something that happened on the very first show. Look at this. Is someone on the phone? I'm being told. Hello, someone on the phone. Hi, Jason. I think you were told it's your mama. It's not your mama and it's not your baby mama. Who is this? Really? You don't recognize my voice? Is this Katie Kirk? <laughs> yes! Jason, I just wanted to say congratulations, mazel mazel, good thing, good luck with your new show, and I'm really excited for you. Oh my God, Katie, I thought that we were divorced. <laughs> no, no, I, well, maybe temporarily separated, but I think we've worked things out. Oh, I think we can. Can we go to couples counseling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, how's it going? It's going well. I, the audience is still here, 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 Katie, after one segment. That's a good sign, right? That's that. <laughs> wow. That shows you, first of all, I look way better with facial hair. Number two, I look like I'm 11. Number three, we've had a lot of configurations of this set. Mm -hmm. The audience was over here back in the day. That's, I was on trying to floor. figure that out when I was watching the monitor. Like, I don't, I don't. We had it. some bingo hall folding chairs and uh, yeah, right over there. That's about all we could afford was bingo <laughs> hall. And then we got our lights from like divorce court or something. The next For clip real? is from our first episode during our first national run back in 2016. And people have asked me, was I really surprised? Truly, I had no idea that this was going to happen. Every now and then we want to uh, check in with someone very close to my heart. So this morning, join. What? <laughs> So I'm supposed to just read the prompter, a little surprise. So this morning, a little surprise. I'm just going to read the prompter. Joining us live on Skype is my mother, Dar. This is a surprise to me. I, I did not know this was going to happen. Good morning. Is she coming? You got lost? Ha, ha, ha. The dar surprising me. Let me tell you, uh, and my mom's going to laugh because she, like me, we love the casual clothes. That was the last time my mom wore dress pants. That was. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I got to be really quick on the story because I could go on and on and on about it. The funny part about it is, you know, we were doing a national run and we had a big, big boss named, we called her the general. Mm -hmm. And she was kind of running the thing. And Jeff and Ted, uh, my husband called and said, hey, Dara's flying in. Would you like her to be part of the show? Yeah. And the general, again, proves executives don't always know. The executives did not want that surprise on television. And Jeff, being the good executive producer that he is and a guy that knows television, said, yes, 
who doesn't like a guy that loves his mother? And the woman said, uh, the general said, the audience doesn't care about Jason, and they're, so they're not going to care about his mother. And Jeff stayed with his instincts, and to this day, that clip is one of our highest rated on social media. So... Again, don't have a heart sometimes. that's right. Well, she did. She grew one later. We've uh, had hundreds of guests on the shows over the years, but I've never connected with someone instantly like I did uh, with my buddy Paige Davis in March of 2018. Look at this. I have to tell you what happened behind. <laughs> so behind this wall is a little cubby hole where I wait to come out and I'm sitting there and I'm like putting on some makeup, spraying my breath and Paige comes from behind with her Facebook live and scares the crap out of me. Yeah, I love it. Hi, sweetie. Hi. How are you? So I heard you wore those for me. I, I Look, I have fancy. fancy kicks, too. I love it. I wore these for you. Burberry, That's right. Yeah. Well, my favorite. I wore my flower converse because I'm here for the Home and Garden Show. That's, That's why I'm here. Well, I will tell you, again, uh, not a TV moment. After that episode aired, that was a Friday. That night, she saw my buddy Fallon from KDWB at an event and asked to get my number because she wanted to hang out with us that night. So that night, in one of the weirdest moments of my adult life, Paige Davis called me, we hung out, we went back to my house with my friends, and we watched Trading Spaces with Paige Davis sitting on my couch. It was very meta. I was like, what's <laughs> happening? This is very weird, and we're legit friends to this day. Mm -hmm. She's one of my favorite people that's ever walked through the stage. Next, we move to December 2018. That was when a young band called Yam House made their first appearance on our show. Look at this. Where, I hear, there, does Yam stand for something? It does, yep. Okay. Yam stands for You Are Me. So it's an acronym. Oh, I like that. Yeah. We're oh. trying to be nice. So not the vegetable. No, not, not the yeah. vegetable. Okay. We tried sweet, sweet potato, potato shack. shack. Yeah, it was taken. Yeah. That, that was taken. Quite that have the same same not the same ring. I don't no. know if it would fit on an album cover, actually. Yeah. No, 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 no. That name was taken. How did you guys We have to credit Shane, actually. Mm -hmm. Shane Wells was the one that found Yam House. Uh, again, you're looking at four great guys. As nice as you want them to be. Since then, We've had them back several times, and you guys know this. They even wrote and performed our brand new theme song, which kicked off our season six last fall. So, aren't they nice? They're so nice. They're just wonderful guys, and they're so talented. Yes, like beyond right. and raised right. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, they just you can tell they have, and their parents, all of them, the families watch the show. Hi guys, they're all wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guys. Yeah. They're on tour. They're opening uh, for a band. They're all across the country uh, over the fall. So. Go support them if you're in their city. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. Fun memories. <laughs> Welcome back. Don't forget, sign up to be a part of our virtual audience. Just go to the Jason Show Facebook page, Jason Show TV, and click the link we posted. Sign up for a certain day, and you will be part of the show and get one of these fabulous mugs. Right, Thank Kendall? You. They have your face on the back. That's right. Unfortunately, we're going to take a break. More memories when we come back. Back in a moment. My mug with my mug. <laughs> Good times, right, Kendall? Yeah. It's, uh, Jeff reminded me, I tell this story all the time, but it bears repeating because it, you know, we really are kind of the little show that, that, that can. No, not a lot of people had faith in it. They were like, what, what's this? But our first show at the fair, which was a week after we debuted, mm -hmm. the bosses thought that was a great idea. Uh, we're at the fair. We barely know how to do the show here. Mm -hmm. But the second week we're on there at the fair, and in the front row is Dennis Swanson, who, if you don't know Dennis Swanson, he's a legendary TV executive. He discovered Oprah Winfrey. He put Oprah Winfrey in Chicago. Oh, wow. He's our boss, our giant boss, sitting in the front row. He was a fan of ours. And Shane is the producer. We're at the fair. Five seconds before the open runs, Shane in my ear says, Jason, we have no teleprompter and we have no tape go <laughs> and that was it that was it <laughs> we had no video i said tape we had no video no teleprompter so i couldn't go to anything and then she goes go and then the open ran and it was like hey ladies and gentlemen we're live from the fair and there's there's swanee there's a man that discovered oprah sitting in the front row sweating like ted in a suit 
and we had to fill <laughs> 11 minutes with nothing. With me just going, hi. Just ripping. Yeah, it was great. Okay. Tomorrow on the show, the story I've been talking about for more than a week. What happened when I was supposed to go zip lining? Don't miss the outcome tomorrow. Kendall, Kendall. That's going to do it for us. Thank you all for watching these past six years. We can't wait for season seven. In the meantime, go out there and be yourself because no one can tell you you're doing it wrong. We'll see you tomorrow, everyone.